This is the Western Sidewinder Compact and 22 caliber, and this is what a full auto 15 shot group looks like. Oh yeah, this review is gonna be a lot of fun today. Hey everybody, I am Jared Clark with Air Guns of Arizona. Today we're gonna be taking a look at the Western Sidewinder Compact. This is a hammerless repeater that is available in a select fire. So you have semi-automatic and you have fully automatic options of fire with this gun. Don't let its size fool you. Even though it is only 26 and a half inches, this thing packs a massive punch in whichever caliber you set it up in. So the idea of this video is to not only highlight all the features that this gun has to offer, we're gonna talk about specs, power, shot count. I'm gonna go over everything from start to finish about this awesome groundbreaking new gun in front of us. So please stick around till the end of the video and we'll give you everything you need to know about the Western Sidewinder Compact. Okay, so what we're gonna do quickly for you is unbox the Western Sidewinder Compact as you could expect to get it straight from your dealer. Um, they do come standard with these nice Savior soft zipping cases um, and it's more than enough room to put a scope on the gun and actually get some field use out of this case. So big fan of the Savior case. It has three pockets up here, a big one for accessories, the one in the middle where you're gonna find your owner's manual and then the one on the left would just be a medium sized one for accessories as well. So you have a padded three pockets here and then you have these nice Velcro straps that hold your gun very safely and securely inside of the case. So that's how it would come right out of the box. The magazines are already in the guns. So your mags here, your owner's manuals here and everything else is zipped up really nice and cleanly in the savior case. So here it is, same gun. We just have our Callus up top and AccuTac SR5 on the bottom. And you can see this is a tactical, aggressive looking gun. It is small. The overall length is 26 and a half inches. And that is arguably one of the coolest features about it. And just under six and a half pounds without a scope on it. That is the epitome of a compact air gun. So the 22 we're gonna be looking at today, 26 and a half inches you can get some serious power and shot count that I'm gonna talk about at 20 yards. So stick around for that because the uniqueness, the efficiency of this valve and what it's capable of is really one of the coolest parts of this gun. It does number shot counts and powers unlike anything else with the size of air it has. So without getting too much into that right now, let's go ahead and just give you a quick highlight of everything the gun has. Um, we'll once it over here and then we'll take it back, put some air in it and start doing some shooting, which is what everyone came here to see anyway. So we'll do this quickly. The Sidewinder compacts are available in 22, which is the one we're gonna be looking at really in depth today. They're available in 25 caliber and they're also available in the 30 caliber. In 22 and 25 caliber, you get a 15 shot magazine. And then in 30 caliber, you get a 12 shot magazine. The rubber butt pad in the back is just a fixed butt pad. It's rubberized, so it's got a nice texturized feel to it. That one's just for looks more than anything. Up top here, you have a right-handed cheek piece. Left-handed shooters, I'm sorry, they don't have anything for you yet, um, but this is a right-handed specific cheek piece. Um, and the main reason we don't have a left-handed one yet is because this is where our magazine sits. You see this shiny silver piece right here. This is the 15 shot in 22 caliber magazine. It is made entirely out of titanium. So this is a very, valuable piece of the gun and it's actually what creates the barrel the metal from the barrel seals directly up against the titanium so it's a metal to metal seal and that's where the pellet leaves from the magazine straight into the barrel so this is really cool in the fact that it does seal on the barrel but even cooler now that it can be removed from the gun so the gun is completely safe as long as the magazine is out of it. We're gonna go straight down to this other silver piece you see. This is the power wheel is what they call this. Truth be told, <laughs> spirit of full disclosure, I don't fully understand exactly how this valve works, but how it works in my head. So if you're gonna fact check me and tell me I'm wrong, just this is just an analogy. I'm, I, I could be right, but I could be wrong as well. This almost works as a dwell time for the valve. So when you tighten it up and you make this really tight, think of it like a spring. So if you tighten it up, it's only gonna let the valve, it's gonna shut it real quick because it's under tension. So it's gonna restrict your power. If you back it out and make it really loose, it's gonna let the valve open and then shut it slowly, allowing a lot of air to come through it. So this just directly dictates how much air is allowed to pass through the valve. 
So if you want less power, you tighten it up. If you want more power, you loosen it. That being said, do not assume that this just can click out three clicks, one, two, three, and then go back in three clicks and be exactly where you left it. It doesn't really operate like that. So if you are gonna tinker with your power wheel, very highly recommend you have a chronograph and you know what you're doing because you can actually adjust this to the point that it's just wasting air and it's diminishing your shot count without any gain velocity. So power wheel, use it in small increments, never go more than three to five clicks at a time and make sure that you're shooting in front of a chronograph are my two best suggestions for you there. On the flip side now, this is the other side of the block. We have our selector here. You can see it says safe, semi and full. So this is just our fire selector. Do you wanna fire it in semi-automatic function? Do you wanna fire it in full? or do you wanna make the gun safe, as that's one of our two physical safeties. Right in front of that, there is a gauge. This gauge back here is gonna read your regulator operating pressure. So this gauge only tells you what the regulator is operating at. So you're not gonna see it move anytime unless the bottle gauge drops below what this one's operating at. So it's a lot to digest, but what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that this one, it usually comes in just shy of 150, 130 to 150, somewhere in there. And you just wanna make sure that this gauge always has more pressure than this gauge. It's as simple as that. Don't let this gauge fall below this gauge. You'll never have a problem with air in the gun. While we're talking about the regulator, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit. You can see this knob in between the barrel and the bottle here. This is your regulator adjustment point. Again, it is adjustable. Western does fine tune these from the factory, so it is set at a very efficient point. I know human nature is to tinker and try and make it better. I, I'm guilty of it myself. It doesn't need to be tuned, adjusted. You can, like I said, it is there, so you can do it. I recommend not doing it, again, unless you have a chronograph and you got some good know-how with the gun, you're, you're kind of familiar with it. Um, you do not want to turn the regulator down while there's pressure in the bottle that will cause some serious problems for your regulator, but you can turn it up while it's under pressure. If you feel crazy and you wanna adjust your regulator, like I said, just make sure that you feel comfortable doing it, degas the bottle if you're turning it down, and then make sure that you're shooting in front of a chronograph so you know where you find your peak efficiency points and you're not being wasteful with the air. Moving forward, we got right here, this is our barrel. This is a 17 inch barrel. You can see it actually ends right here and they are threaded with half inch by 20 UNF threads. So if you have any other favorite moderators, um, zero DBs, Tridents, Donny FLs, you can easily accessorize the gun how you like with the half inch by 20 right here. It does come included with the zero DB compact, which does a lot for its size. It really pound for pound is hard to beat, but you do have ability there to change it, make it your own if you want it. Half inch by 20. This barrels are 17 inches, um, very accurate barrels and uh, very efficient for power as we'll talk about at 20, teasing it again. Speaking about the 17 inch barrel, if you look right here, there are two four millimeter bolts these are clamping bolts, so if you ever want to take the barrel off your gun or if you ever need to adjust the head spacing to make it seal with the magazine, those two four millimeters, once those are loose, you'll be able to thread the barrel right out of the receiver. It's threaded in right here. If you loosen those two bolts, you'll be able just to thread the barrel out, pull it out, you can inspect it, clean it, make sure everything is spaced correctly. Um, so it is very simple to get the barrel out and do service and things like that to the Sidewinder Compact. All the bottles on the Western Sidewinder and Sidewinder Compact do come with a bottle valve on them. So if you decide you wanna go with a 480, a 580, or a 700cc bottle, all of them can be interchanged simply as threading this one off and threading a larger one on. Right here on, on top of our barrel, we have a Picatinny scope rail. You can see I got my callus on it. That's just a standard pick rail. You have one up top here for scopes, and then you have two on the sides for accessories here, and one on the bottom where I have the Accutac bipod clamp to. So a total of four Picatinnies. Below that, this tube right here is technically your air plenum. So you can see your 300cc carbon fiber bottle comes standard. Um, those are in the front and they go to the regulator block here, and then everything behind that, that's your plenum. So here's your air kind of right in the middle. You got the 300cc reservoir, the plenum right here behind it, barrel up top. And then right here in the middle, we have our trigger. This is a, it's a repeater trigger. I, I don't wanna go out on a limb and call it a match grade trigger. Um, I personally do not have any problems with it. And after you shoot the gun, probably after your third or fourth magazine, 
you'll do the same thing that I've seen almost everyone do and go, you know, it's not that bad, you get used to it. And that's what I'll say, you do get used to it. It's not a two stage, it actually is working a lever that fires the gun. So there is a little bit of weight to it that you're not used to, but again, you'll get used to it. It's not creepy, it's, it still breaks clean, and it gives you more than enough ability to be accurate. Flip the gun again, this is our trigger safety. So the gun does have two safeties. It has the fire selector in the back, and then you have your trigger safety right here. As you can see, right now it's safe. Now it's in fire and can be engaged. So the gun does have two points of safety and then ability to remove the magazine, making it really the ability to truly make the gun safe and not functional if you don't want it to be. AR style grips. These come standard with this nice one with the Western logo right here. Um, but if you had any other aftermarket AR style grips that you wanted, that is a standard connection point. Last thing is on this side, we have our bottle gauge here. So this is gonna tell me how much air is available in the bottle. Um, and then your quick connect right here is where you would refill it with air. So it's just a standard quick connect. The gun can be filled to 300 bar. And again, we're gonna talk about all this on the 20 yard range. You have 300 cc's of air to start with, can fill to 300 bar incredibly efficient with it. We'll talk numbers here in a second. Western Air Guns do have a one year factory warranty. So if you do have any problems within the first year of ownership, just contact the dealer that you purchased it from. Stern to bow, I think that is the Sidewinder Compact in a very quick bite. So what we're gonna do now is put air in the gun. We're gonna meet you back at 20 and I'm gonna show you what makes this really special in terms of shot count, power. We'll go out to 50, do some long range testing and then meet you right back here to finish it up. Hope you stay with us. still blows my mind that that's actually capable of doing with an air gun. Yeah. It's so fast and it's so accurate. How does it refill? It's impressive. It's really impressive. <laughs> that is more fun than you should be allowed to have with an air gun. All right, we're here at the 20 yard range indoors. We're gonna do some shooting now, which you all came for. We're gonna do group size at 20 yards, do a full magazine, uh, 15 shots to see what kind of group size we can expect. Then we're gonna crunch some numbers, give you a shot count on all three calibers, as well as show you how much power potential the gun has if you wanna max it out. First thing we're gonna show you is the magazine, both how to take it out and how to load it. So it comes in the gun right here. It does not rotate, it should be stiff. This neural knob right here is what locks it and, and pushes it onto its rotation axis. So you wanna pull this down, and when you do that, it'll naturally snap back. And now it's unlocked. The magazine should now free up, and you should be able to take it out very simply once the lock's out of place. You have a magnetic faceplate on here that tells you Sidewinder and the 22 caliber right there. So just take that off right now, and we are ready to load pellets. You always want the actuator teeth that pop up here pointing up. So if you're doing it like this and it's wobbly, you're, you're loading it the wrong way. You want it nice and flat. And then you just drop them in nose first. And you should see the skirt kind of occupy that hole. You just kind of seat it with your hand. It doesn't take too much force. Once you get the 15th one on there, make sure they're all nice and flush there. We're just gonna put the plate and just kind of rotate it until those teeth click. So now the magazine is loaded with pellets. They can't fall back out because that magnet's there. And then to put it back into the gun, so the teeth point back to you like we were talking about. And right there, you see it's just, it's, it's in, but it's not really engaged. What you wanna do is get that click. You can kind of see it, that clicks. And I don't want it all the way in, I want it in a relaxed state. So push it in, let it relax, and then that little locking arm just comes over and up. Like I said, it, it does take a little bit of feel, but what I see a lot of people think they do is they push it as hard as they can and then try and slide it over. That'll, it'll never line up like that. Push it till you hear it click and then release it until it moves a little bit. And then that locking arm will go right home. After a couple times, you'll be able to do it with the blindfold on, um, but very simple process. Like we said, click it, relax it, lock it. We'll start with group size. We got 15 of the Rangemaster Kings is what we're gonna be shooting loaded into the magazine. Let's see what kind of group here at 20 yards we can hold together. So there's 15, I mean, we're just 
crushing the bullseye right there. Um, it's kind of dark, honestly. My black scope on my black background there makes it really hard to see. So a lot of that was just instinctive shooting, but, which is cool because you can do it with this gun when you have the ability to have quick follow-up shots. So 15 shots there, uh, semi-auto style. You know where I'm going with this. Next group, we're gonna do full auto style. So we'll reload the mag, do 15 of those fully auto. <laughs> All right, so there's 15 more shots. None of those 30 shots got outside of the nine ring on that bullseye. So that is a lot of fun. Like I said, you can't have, objectively speaking, you can't have more fun with a pre-charged air gun than with the Sidewinder or the Sidewinder Compact. That right there in full auto is fantastic. I'm thrilled with those results. Great shooting, shows you how accurate the barrel is, shows you the kind of repeatability indoors you can expect. So what we wanna do now is we'll do shot count and we'll figure out how much, how many shots we can get per fill as well as how much potential power the gun has. Sidewinder 22 Compact is the first one we're gonna start with. On all calibers, we filled the 300 bar and we were doing them at velocities that they would come right out of the box. For example, in 22 caliber, our average velocity was 860 feet per second with the 25.39 range Master Kings. If you crunch that number, it's right at 41 foot-pounds. So, off of a 300 bar fill at 41 foot-pounds of energy, the Sidewinder Compact 22 was able to get 60 shots per fill. So that is insanely efficient when you think about a 25 grain going 860 and you're able to do it 60 times. That's five magazines off this little bottle. So. 22 caliber, off the charts efficiency. I don't know if there's anything else on the market that can produce that kind of results, in all honesty. So next up is the 25 caliber. In 25 caliber, we're pushing a 33.9 grain pellet at an average of 854 feet per second. If you crunch those numbers, that's 55 foot pounds. So in 25 caliber, you're getting 55 foot pounds and it got 45 shots per fill. So three full magazines at north of 50 foot pounds and a gun that's 26 and a half inches overall length. Compact, high shot count, good power. This little package has everything. Last but not least, 30 caliber. We're shooting a 44 grain pellet at an average of 805 feet per second. Um, if you crunch those numbers, that's about 65 foot pounds. So again, huge amounts of energy output and we still got three magazines. We got 44 shots per fill, even at 65 foot pounds in the 30 caliber. So however caliber you look at it, it is doing more efficiency than a lot of guns that are available on the market. So kudos to the Sidewinder and the Sidewinder Compact for being incredibly efficient with air because they do it as good as anybody, but that's not where it stops either. The last thing we did in each caliber is we went ahead and figured out how much potential energy there is. So I'll, I'll tell you what I did on those is I turned the regulator all the way up to 180 and I adjusted the power wheel to give me as much power as possible. And in 22 caliber, you can get up to 63 foot pounds in 25 caliber, you can get up to 70 foot pounds. And in 30 caliber, I was able to get 95 foot pounds. So granted, that will have a steep um, negative effect on your shot count. You can't expect to get those high power numbers and the shot counts I just talked about. But if you absolutely just want power out of a small package, you can do 63 and 22, 70 and 25, and 95 and 30 caliber. Huge power potential for such a small package. And that's what I've alluded to a couple times. These kind of numbers are unheard of in my opinion. We've been doing air gun reviews for a few years now, and I am floored with not only the number of shots it can get, but the power potential it has with a 17 inch barrel. Absolutely absurd. It's one of the best marketing features on this gun in my opinion, and it's kind of the way of the future with the hammerless valve. So very impressed here at 20 yards. Very, very impressed with the numbers we're getting. Um, what we're gonna do now is take it out to 50, put some of those numbers under the microscope at a little bit longer range and see what kind of groups and accuracy we can hold together. Whoa. We have the Sidewinder Compact out at our 50 yard range. We're gonna do what we normally do here and try and give you an idea for accuracy at 50 yards. I have the 15 shot magazine loaded up with the Range Master King 25.39 grains. So we're gonna try and put five shots down range and see what kind of group size we get and then maybe have a little bit of fun with full auto. Okay. So that's five out of the magazine. Let's get down there and take a closer look at it. I'm thrilled with that kind of accuracy at 50. This is my um, one inch reference coin. So it is definitely smaller than an inch. I'd put it probably closer to half an inch, center to center. 
like we said, usually you sacrifice a little bit of accuracy when you go with the repeater, but as we're seeing the Sidewinder here, it hangs with pretty much anything in the high-end PCP world, plus gives you the ability to multi-shot, fire up shot, and what we're gonna do now, have a little bit of fun with the full auto. What we're gonna do now is really show you the main selling point of this gun, and we're gonna do 15 shots full auto at 50 yards. So there will be some compromised accuracy because of how fast it's firing, but the idea here is to show you what it's capable of in full auto. So we're gonna let it fly at 50 here. Okay, so we sacrificed a little bit of our precision to get that rapid fire, but as you can see at 50 yards, it's still pretty darn good for how fast we're shooting them. Really impressed with the Sidewinder Compact out at 50. Let's take it back in the showroom and we'll finish this video up for you. Thank you for staying with me till the end. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. I hope that during this process, you learned something about the Western Airgun Sidewinder Compact. We showed you that in 22 caliber, we're getting 60 shots at 41 foot pounds, which is insane for something that's 26 and a half inches. We showed you that the 30 has the ability to get up to like 95 foot pounds, which is insane power out of an air gun that can go semi and full auto. So I really think this gun is unique. I really think it's kind of one of a kind in the industry. And if you look at it with an equal eye, there's really nothing that's gonna outweigh it in terms of fun factor, shootability, usability, um, everything the American market wants is right here in this air gun. So, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you keep an eye out for our next videos. Follow us on Instagram, join, subscribe on YouTube, join our email list on our website, do whatever you can to follow us. We'd appreciate it. It, and I hope to see you in the next video.